Bree, thanks for coming by. Of course, thanks for having me. You're right across from where we are, Outlaw um, Technology. You're yep. holding a scan gun. I am. Is that the right word for it? Technically, it's an RFID reader. Okay, so it's not even a scan gun. It's an RFID reader, which is, is different. Well, I can do barcode mode, too. Okay. So I can scan both RFID tags which from our booth across the aisleway, I was able to grab at least one. Oh, really? And then of course, I'm also able to scan with an R, uh, barcode scanner. I like it, that's, that's pretty, I, Of I? course, help yourself. <laughs> I don't break yep. anything. I don't think I'll break anything. Yeah, so where you would use, look at him. Yeah, where that's you would really use dumb. this tool is if you were in cultivation, yep. you would use it to audit your plants packages, right. make updates to metric, plant moves, plant destructions, yep. package adjustments, package moves. And then if you were down in processing, again, you'd be able to use it to help audit your packages yep. against metric, make any updates to metric, merges, splits, all of that cool stuff. And then down in dispensary, you could use this to audit your finished goods. Right, so you get all the goods in dispensary, you can audit them. And so, or, or you know where they, it, cannabis, unlike a lot of other uh -huh. industries, there's a requirement everywhere, every everywhere. state, different requirements, but similar. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to know where every product is at all times, where it's going, all the way from the store shelf, mm -hmm. all the way back to the plant. Is exactly. That right? and, and if this, there's a discrepancy, you better let the state know immediately in your window of yeah. 12 hours, 24 hours, or else you're right. at risk. Yeah. And this automates, not automates, but but makes it so much easier. It does, and in some ways it does automate. Yeah. So things like RFID tags, you know, we're used to scanning a lot of things with barcode scanners, yes. our cameras, QR codes at restaurants yeah. for menus. With this RFID, think of this similar technology to, you know, if you're driving your car on the toll road, it doesn't matter if you drive under at 50 miles an hour or 100 miles, right. it'll always scan you, yeah. it'll always charge you. Yes, uh, that's true. Yep, so same sort of technology in those metric tags. Right. And, and I, I can't imagine people are watching this in our audience that don't know what metric tags are, mm -hmm. but it's the it's the standardized system in every state. Not every state, I guess, but 23 most states, 23 I believe. 23 of yep. like 25. Um, that's the system that the state uses to track all the things. Yep. Yeah. And um, what were you doing before you were working in cannabis? You know, before I worked in cannabis, I worked in RFID technology. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. And then before that, I was like a vet tech. Okay. And I got tired of being bitten, scratched by animals. Yes. So I decided so you're to scratch in the cannabis industry. Yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ah. So what we. So what. So other. Um, like uh, cl it clearly makes sense in cannabis. Yep. But what other um, use cases? Use cases for RFID tags. So RFID technology. I yeah. Guess. A you lot of a lot of traditional retail uses yeah. RFID yeah. tags. Uh, Walmart switched over to an RFID mandate last year, two okay. years ago. So now everything that you buy in Walmart, other than produce and um, like pharmaceutical stuff is going to have an RFID tag in it. And I would know that it's different than a barcode because it's a little bit thicker. Yeah, no? so yeah. basically when you try to rip open those tags, you'll notice that there is almost like a metal wiring in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Almost like a plastic yeah, inlay. Yeah. And what it is, it's a metal antenna with a silicone chip. The metal antenna captures the energy of the, ta of the devices, of antennas, yep. channels it to the chip, and reads the tag. That's why you're able to read it from 12 to 15 feet away or like in the case of like your tag in your toll lane, 12 feet up in the right, air. Right, right, okay. And uh, I love this. So it's it's like the cool part of, I think, <laughs> cool slash nerdy yep. part of cannabis that, that differentiates it. But also I think the, the sort of lay person that doesn't understand what's going on in the cannabis industry doesn't even know it. No. Right? And like you could this, be a person in the cannabis industry and, and still not, not understand it. That's, yeah. Not understand it for sure, but but when you get into it, you're going to know that the state's going to want to know, your regulator's going to want to know everything yep. that's going on. Um, but but for the folks, like, I think this is a major um, selling point for legalization almost, right? You go to people who don't know much or voters and say, hey, we're actually going to know where all plants are all yeah. the time, all the way through the life cycle. Exactly. It, the mm -hmm. seed go in or the cut comes out of, of a clone and goes all the way to your store shelf and then track up and down that life cycle exactly it's pretty unique definitely you're gonna know exactly which room in some cultivations you'll know exactly which tables right. that plant was grown on right. um, and again all of these facilities are very closely monitored yes. um, these people are great at what they do they take a lot of pride in their you know cultivation processes and they take it seriously it's yeah. sort of regulation you wish we had uh, you know 20 years ago with opioids you yes. know yeah and instead we're doing it with the plant but right, right. you right. know it may be over <laughs> it's good for your business maybe it's very burdensome sometimes for the industry but it, it also lends itself to an ever more professional industry I think, right? Definitely. you actually have to yeah understand how your operations running how you're gonna implement like yeah. a lot of technology and others um, to actually make your process better be compliant exactly and then continue to sort of build and grow yeah and one of the points of pride we have with outlaw is that you know 
metric already mandates the tags. Right. You have them in your facility, whether you want to or not. Right. You still, by law, you have to have them. So where it's nice where we fit in is that our tools, like our handheld, like our harvest system that we've got across the uh, aisle way over there, is that the tools actually bring benefit. Right. So now instead of counting those tags by hand or scanning them or walking up and down a row with like a count hand, clicker. Like my head just explodes. It's awful. Yeah. At least our tool, I give this to a cultivator and then now instead of having to spend five hours counting every single one of your plants, you can audit those plants in 20 minutes, right. um, your entire facility, even faster, depending on how like, right. fast you like to run right. in your, you know, you, in your greenhouse. Because you could have this in your hand, Yeah. go up and down the plants, and it just uploads. Instantaneous, uploads. yeah. Uh, the Is that record, the right word, upload? No. I mean, it's going to it's gonna activate the tags and read them instantaneously yeah. thousands of times a second, yeah. I think our current record is we have a customer out in the Midwest who told us that he audited um, something like 16,000 plants in 21 minutes. Now, he's fat. Was he in like a... Like a, a, was he on like a scooter? He did. He did say that he was sweating at the end. Yeah. But you know, it was like an auditor showed up, and he really quickly wanted to make sure before they came back there that everything was good, and ran back and did an audit, wow. and was able to in 60 minutes verify. That. We have reports. We've verified it directly against metric from this device. So again, it's it's nice to provide a tool set. You know, obviously we're business, we're a company, but it's nice to provide a tool set that we know brings benefit to people. You right. know, I've had customers come to me and say, you're the reason I get home at night because I'm not still at the, right, right. you know, at the center We're uploading like everything. A, yeah. Even like literally like a spreadsheet. Correct. Yeah. So that's what we're really doing in dispensaries is trying to eliminate, I keep joking today and yesterday that I'm on the mission to eliminate pen and paper. Yes. You know, it's like I, <laughs> it's I good, reached out to, mission. yeah, I reached out to trusted partners. I said, how are you auditing? And they're like, well, why don't you come in and see? I was like, perfect. What time? They said 6 a.m. Oh. Shit. You know? <laughs> how about a little bit later? All right. What's like, the next time you might be there? Do you, guys, do you guys ever audit at like nine? You know? right. Maybe even 10. <laughs> yeah. My dog doesn't like to wake up before <laughs> right. the sun rises, you know? So you got there at six? I got there at six. And what I saw was Excel spreadsheets, one person counting, shouting out the package another ID, person. and another person typing it in. And so I said, we could do this better. Yeah. So now we put it on a device. Yeah. They can take it where they need to, load it up. And look, other industries are doing it. FedEx isn't handwriting right, FedEx right. IDs. Right. They have a little beeper, beep, yeah. beep, beep, and off they go. Yeah. You know, we're bringing that same sort of efficiencies, you know, to dispensaries. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's only going to get... Well, bigger, right? Yep. The industry is only getting bigger. We're, exactly. we're in Maryland now. The Maryland industry is in its infancy. Yep. It's only going to get bigger, right? Yeah. We haven't even hit the year mark for adult use here. Right. July 1st. Right. July 1st. Yep. And it's already going gangbusters. And yep. it's only in, isn't it only in the dispensaries that were actually opened as medical dispensaries yeah. previously? So there's a lot of growth to have happen, but also to sort of your technology making life easier, a lot more people who don't have a lot of experience opening dispensaries yeah. or even cultivation facilities, the rest of the licenses, like they're going to need help. Exactly. And they don't know what they don't know. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That's the kind I've been of big wind key of piece. That here. Yeah. Like talking to people who like build facilities or mm -hmm. build retail environments. Like they just don't know what they don't know. Yeah. New operators, and they need to know more, which is why I think NECAM in Baltimore is quite helpful because yeah. there are a lot of people like not I wouldn't say kicking tires, but like really interested in like getting a new license, mm -hmm. understanding what, what what that would mean, even a micro license, like all those things yeah. that are um, down the pike. But like talking to folks like you, and you guys have been busy. We have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're go-getters. It's good, it's good. Well, you guys are here early. That's yep. why I, I was here uh, setting up like 8.30, and some of your folks are already here. I was like, it doesn't even open until 10. I know. They have to like, open the door for me, but like, yeah, but someone's here, and it was at your booth. So yep. like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's good to do work in your backyard, yep. but you also live in Virginia. Yes. Um, and from my perspective, um, you're going to do much more work in your backyard, I hope. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. From your backyard, even further stuff. Yes. Hopefully. Yep. Yeah, and I, and what is nice about the East Coast is that there are operators that are um, the East Coast markets seem to develop much more. Like I'm, I'm Canadian, I live in Toronto. Like yep. much more, the air on the side of much more regulation. Yeah, areas. well, you know, East Coast, you know, not to you know, not to start East Coast West yeah, Coast, don't but start that, yeah. East Coast had the benefit of being able to see it right. happen first. You know, right. they right. got to sit back, and we all got to watch. You know, the first states that went first kind of learned the hard lessons, mm -hmm. and so you know. It's part of growth. It's part it's of a new industry. The it's, East Coast right now. Yeah, you got. Yeah. To, we got to kind of learn the lessons, and I think you know every state that comes on, they get to learn from the states before it, and you kind of get to see what to do and what not to do. Um, we all saw Oklahoma yeah. with eight thousand licenses. Yeah. You know, how about we'll have eight thousand licenses in fifteen minutes? Oh, okay. <laughs> we all get to see New York, right? And that we'll struggle. We'll have five licenses in five years. No, yeah. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> well, and true. bodegas everywhere right, selling. Right. Yeah. Right. They um, don't have to track in metric for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I mean, it's. Yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, but but the 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 future is much more 
like what we're seeing in Maryland. Yeah. Think, right? Um, much more rigorous regulation, but also new markets coming online and actually doing it pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Bree, it's nice talking to you. I you appreciate well. you bringing the... Of course. You're the only one to bring up... It's not even a prop. This is like a real thing. Um, to bring a show and tell. Of course. To the interview. So thanks Anytime. so much. Anytime. Great. Thanks, Bree. Thank you.